What is going on guys, welcome back. In today's video we're going to learn how to connect to SSH servers and automate SSH processes using Python. So let us get right into it. Alright, so for this video today we're going to use an external Python library called Fabric. This library allows us to connect to SSH servers, to navigate around them, to execute commands and so on. And of course, in order to be able to use it, we need to first install it by opening up the command line of our choice and typing pip install fabric. And once we have fabric installed, we can go into our code and type from fabric import and we're going to use two classes here, we're going to use the connection class and we're going to use the config class. Uh, the connection class, obviously, we need to have a connection and the config we also want to pass a configuration into the connection, for example, for passing the pseudo password, when we want to execute something with pseudo privileges with root privileges, uh, we don't want to have to type the password in manually, we want to pass it as a configuration to the connection, which is why we need the config class. And in addition to that, we're also going to import a core Python module called get pass. And this allows for an invisible password input because uh, the alternative would be to say password equals input, for example, enter password. And the problem with that is that while I'm typing in the password, you can see what I'm typing. And this is not only relevant for the video here, because I don't want you to see my root password. This is also relevant for you guys. If someone's standing behind you, if you're in a public space, you don't want people to see what you're typing when you're uh, when you're typing your root password. So you want to have an invisible password input. And this can be done with get pass. As I said, this is a core Python module, so you don't need to install anything. Uh, you can just say get pass dot get pass, enter your password. Um, the problem is, however, that this does not seem to work inside of PyCharm. This is not a problem with the code. This is more a problem of this terminal that we have down here. Uh, because I don't see any messages, I cannot type anything here. Uh, it doesn't really do anything. However, we can uh, solve the problem by just using the ordinary Windows CMD uh, command line. So I can go into CMD, I can navigate to the respective uh, directory that I'm working in right now. Um, there you go. Uh, and here I can now just run main py and it asks me for the password and I can type something and you don't see what I'm typing. So this is how we're going to get the root password. So we're going to say enter your root password here before we connect. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define the configuration based uh, on that root password. So we're going to say config equals config uh, overwrite. So we're going to overwrite something we're going to overwrite with a dictionary the pseudo um, the pseudo field or the pseudo key, we're going to give it a value of another dictionary. Uh, in the context of pseudo, what we're going to do is we're going to say the password is going to be whatever we get as a password up here. So we ask for the password and then we pass it here uh, as a dictionary inside a dictionary that we pass here as a keyword argument uh, to the config and this config is going to be then passed into the connection, which is going to be con equals connection. Uh, and here we're going to pass the IP address. Now, this is important. Now you need to connect to some SSH service, it really doesn't matter which one you can have your own server, you can have a Raspberry Pi, you can have it locally, you can have uh, a public online SSH server, you need some target. Now, the topic of this video is not how to set up an SSH server. However, I do have a tutorial on this channel by the time you're watching this already. Uh, it is called something like open SSH tutorial in Windows subsystem for Linux, where I show you how you can set up an SSH server locally. So if you struggle with with uh, having an SSH server in the first place, uh, you might want to watch that video. In this case, I already have it. So if I go into my Windows subsystem for Linux here, uh, I can just say sudo service SSH start, and I can pass my root password here then it starts uh, the server and then I can go if config. And I can see here my IP address that I can use to target this machine. So this is the IP address, which is why I'm going to copy this here uh, into the connection constructor. And you can check if this works um, by just going if you have something like this in the Windows subsystem for Linux, you can just go to your ordinary Windows command line and say SSH, and then your username in my case, neural nine at this IP address. And if it works, you know that you set it up correctly. And you can also do that in Python then. So this is now in the Windows terminal in the ordinary CMD command line. 
Um, but this is the server that we're going to use as a demo example in this tutorial. Um, so this is the IP address. And then what we do is we say the user is going to be in my case, again, neural nine, this is exactly what we did in the, in the command line right now. And we say the config is equal to the config. So that's that that is the connection. And now what we can do is we can just run commands. Now we are connected if everything works fine. And we can run simple commands, like for example, show all the files of the directory that you're currently in. So I can do something like connection dot run. And I can run the command uh, command ls dash la. And I can say hide equals true. Why do we say hide equals true? Because we have two ways of displaying uh, the result of this one way is to not say hide equals true. So then it's going to just automatically print the result. I can do that here. Uh, it's going to connect hopefully without Oh, sorry, of course, it won't work like that because we have to do it in uh, the command line because of get pass. So let me again, um, navigate to the directory. And then I'm going to say uh, main py. I'm going to enter my root password. And then you can see that uh, this was executed here. So this is the result of our uh, ls dash la, what you can also do is you can say height equals true. And you can return the result of that into a variable. So you can say result equals whatever we get here. And then I can just say print result dot std out. This is also a possibility. So I can run this again here. And I'm going to see the same effect. If I do both, I'm going to get the output twice because high true uh, prevents the output and then I print it manually or you can just say uh, high true, then it doesn't show the first output of just running that but it saves it into a result. Uh, and you can print it with the std out attribute here. So this is how you run simple commands. Uh, you can also do different stuff. You can say con run pwd to get the current path. And I'm now going to always execute it here. There you go, you can see I am now at home neural nine, maybe we should get rid of this pseudo stuff here because we don't need it yet. Let's just not connect with the pseudo password in the beginning so that we don't have to constantly type something in. So now I can just run and I get the results immediately. And I can also remove the hide equals true here and not store it into a variable. I can save, I can go back into terminal and now I can just execute both commands. There you go. Um, what I can also do is I can change into other directories. However, I cannot do it just like that. So I cannot just say con dot run and then change directory. Um, I don't know what directory I even have, or what directories I even have there. But um, let's go to home or actually, what is the path that I'm currently at? Home neural nine. Okay, this is the path. And here I have uh, basically nothing. So maybe I can go back. What do I have here? Here I have neural nine. So let's just move up a directory. So let's just go CD and dot dot to move up a directory and then print that command again. And you're going to see that this does not really have an effect here. Uh, let me go back here. Um, it still stays in home neural nine, even though I said change directory. The reason for that is because we need to do it differently here. We need to do it with a context manager, we need to go into the change directory as uh, with a with statement. So we need to say, okay, change the directory to that. And inside of that being in that directory, do something. So for example, what I can do is I can say, um, with connection dot CD, this is its own function, it's not the run function. Uh, change directory to and I can now specify uh, something on the Windows hard drive. So mount C uh, users flurry desktop. Um, with that being the case, I can just say connection run and I can say for example, uh, touch some file, I don't know, touch my file txt. And I can say connection dot run also pwd so that I can see actually the result of uh, of my changing the directory. So I can run this now. And you can see I'm in this directory. And if I go to the to the desktop right now, I should be able um, to see the file where is it my file.txt. So this worked. And um, you can see that this is how you do that. This is how you change the directory here. So now let us bring back the sudo again. So let's uncomment these lines. Let's enter the password again, create the config again and pass it here as a keyword argument. 
uh, because now we're going to run an actual pseudo command. Now we're going to do something that requires us to have pseudo privileges. And uh, what we can do here is we can just say connection dot pseudo. So this is also again, its own command, you don't just say con run pseudo something, you say connection pseudo, because that already allows you to not have to type the password manually, you have the, uh, the configuration here, and you just uh, pass the password here in the dictionary, and then it's going to be used in the pseudo function. So you say connection pseudo, uh, for example, apt install vim, I think vim should be installed, but uh, yeah, this should still work. Um, and now I can go ahead and run this again here. And I can enter the correct password. And you can see that it says Vim is already in the newest version. However, I think that if I enter the wrong password, we will still see that uh, nothing happens. So now I type just something into it. And um, it asks me for the pseudo password. And it says, sorry, try again, the password submitted was rejected. So it didn't enter the, the correct password, which is why I was not able to install Vim in this case. Now I didn't install Vim. Uh, with the privileges either because I already had them installed, but but you can you can see uh, what I mean here. So you pass the password once and then the sudo command does it for you automatically it tries to do something, then it's prompted uh, for the password, it's asked to, inter, uh, to enter the password, and it does it automatically based on the config. Uh, we can also do something else, we can do stuff like NeoFetch. So we can actually um, get the graphical output of something like NeoFetch, we can say connection, dot run neo fetch, which is of course a tool that you first need to install if you don't have it. But I can then especially if I'm working in the Windows terminal application, not just in the raw CMD, uh, I can actually see the result of that. There you go. So you can see here, this is the result of neo fetch with all the system information here. Um, and last but not least, I want to show you how you can actually automate a process. So let's say the process that we want to automate this is a very simple example now uh, is we want to connect to the server, we want to run the if config command, like this, and we want to extract this address here, we want to extract this uh, IP address. Now in this case, obviously a trivial task because or an unnecessary task because we already have the IP address, uh, because we needed it to connect with this uh, machine in the first place. But let's just take this as an example here. This is our workflow, we want to type if config, we want to extract that information here or this to be precise. Um, how do we do that with regular ex uh, expressions is what we're going to do here. So we're going to say import re, I have a video also on regular expressions, if you don't know what they are and how they work. But essentially, what we're going to do is we're going to say result is equal to connection dot run if config and then we're going to say the lines are going to be equal to the result, the output of it. So std out, we're going to split that result by backslash n. So we're going to split it line by line, which is going to result in a list of all the individual lines here. So we're going to get this one, this one, this one. And uh, based on that, we're going to filter out all the lines that we're not caring about because the only lines that we care about are the lines or is the one line actually where we have inet followed by the IP address. Um, so we have two inet lines here, what we're going to do now and there may be better solutions to this, we're going to only use the lines that have inet uh, followed by white space so that we can exclude um, the inet six here. So inet followed by uh, a white space and then um, not followed by the local host here. So in this case, this works because we only have two uh, interfaces here, we have Ethernet and loopback. But maybe you have virtual machines, maybe you have uh, multiple connections, then you might want to filter a bit more and a bit more intelligently. But now we're just going to say, okay, all the lines, where we have inet white space and not local host. So we're going to say, the inet lines are going to be equal to um, two lines, or actually, let's do a list comprehension l for l in lines, if um, inet white space in L and 127.0.0.1 not in L. So this is a list comprehension. This gives us all the lines that we're interested in. So we can actually print the result here to see if that works. We're going to go into our Windows terminal here, we're going to say main py and we're going to enter the root password here. And you can see that this is the result the only line that we care about. And now we're going to use a simple regular expression to find exactly this part of it. And we're going to do that by saying we want to have um, 
inet, white space, and then we want to have something that looks like an IP address. We're not going to go for the exact definition of an IP address because in an IP address, you're not allowed to have something like 326 because you only have 255 as a max number. But we're not going to care about this because we're not going to find something like 360 uh, point 720 anyway. So we're going to only find valid IP addresses here. So we're going to say now that the span that we're interested in to extract from the string uh, is going to be equal to re search. And the pattern is going to be inet followed by a space followed by as many digit digits as we want. So zero to nine plus for at least one but as many as we want, followed by dot and this three times followed by again, as many digits as we want. So this of course would also allow for an IP address like this. But we're not going to find this. So it's fine. So we're going to just look for that we don't need a perfect regular expression for this one. Um, and we're going to say that we're looking for that in internet lines zero. And we want to have the span as a result here. So this is going to give us the number. So this is going to give us here, let me show you what the output of that is. Um, this gives us eight to 25. So from here, oh, actually not here from here to here, this is what we're looking for. Now we don't want to have the inet and the white space, we want to have only that. So what we're going to do now to extract the final IP address is we're going to say IP address is equal to inet lines zero. And we're interested in span zero plus five until span one. And then we can print the IP address. There you go. So this is again, a very simple and trivial example, not really useful. But this is how you can automate SSH processes, you can just connect, you can authenticate, you can change directories, you can execute certain commands, get the output, parse something, make decisions, do something again. Uh, you can do that quite easily using fabric in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video. And bye.